You know, I think if entrepreneurs waited around for governments to solve their problems, then we wouldn't have too much progress. Um, the IT industry was built with no support from the government, the offshoring business. So my sense is that, you know, of course, you know, the government is trying to drive change, you know, from grassroots level up. And those are not easy changes to orchestrate in a year. It can take a decade, right? So I think it's a bit unfair to expect that for 60 years, you know, the world function in a certain fashion and overnight, you know, it's going to transform. Uh, I can tell you that the perception of India has changed dramatically. A year ago, the world wanted to have nothing to do with India. And because I've been in the investing world for a long time, two years ago, if we went out to Hong Kong or you went to the US and said, look, I want to do stuff in India, the question was why, right? I think today the question is how can we get involved, right? So fundamentally, you know, first we had to win a perception battle. Now we have to win an execution battle because a lot of that money has flown into India and there's a lot of businesses that are getting built as we speak. They need to execute, they need to get to scale, they need to show that what they promised is actually possible and can be built in our lifetime, right? So I think that we are all, you know, holding this particular government to a very strict bar and to a bar that may be a bit unreasonable. I would much rather judge this government, you know, at the next election, because I think they do have a mindset that, look, we've got a mandate for five years, we've got to play out that mandate, we've got some very urgent priorities around food, security, job creation, power, these are big challenges we need to figure out. You know, and they're figuring that out, right? So I think that entrepreneurs should seek comfort in the fact that there's a lot of capital available today that didn't exist tomorrow, that may not exist tomorrow if they don't deliver. The job creation in India is going to come from different sectors, right? And I think services will be a big part of that in terms of creating growth. So all these companies today, you know, are in the business of services. They don't manufacture physical goods. So I do believe that that's where the growth is going to come from. Now, you know, what we are seeing is when companies do break out, like a Flipkart or a Snap deal, they create tons and tons of employment, right? So one, there is a knock-on effect of employment. Two, there are also companies like Ola that create entrepreneurs because you know you could be a graduate but you may not have a job. You can go out there, buy a cab, start driving a cab and earn a livelihood, right? So I think the knock-on effect of all of this innovation is that either it's gonna create lots and lots of jobs or it's gonna spawn lots of small entrepreneurs. Equally, platforms like a Snap Deal are suddenly allowing a small shopkeeper to be digital, to be online, to connect with customers all over the country so if you think about the change that's coming, right, it's coming from allowing small businesses to connect with customers all over the country, which they couldn't do three years ago or they couldn't do five years ago, right? And so we're seeing a massive build up of the small and mid-sized businesses, which really are the heart of industry in India. So I would say that the the dialogue between India and Israel is one where we start to think about how do you take core technology, the notion of make in India, but make for the world, right? So Israel has always been about make for the world. It, all the technologies are developed in Israel, but they're global thinking. In India, because we have a big consumer market, all the consumer businesses are very domestic facing. The technology businesses need to understand that they're competing with global players as well. So they have to think global to be able to compete with global players, right? The Google of India is Google, right? From a technology standpoint, that is not true in China. So we actually have to deal with the fact that India is a level playing field for IBM, for HP, for Google, for everybody. So if you're gonna compete with these guys, you have to think global. And you have to think about, look, how can I build a world-class product? And so Israel was always thinking about world-class product. They did not think about, can I make a great product for Israel? So I think even though, you know, the Israel model and the India model are very different because of the domestic consumption opportunity, the global orientation of building product is what Israel has. I 
look, I think for a startup to be successful, you need two, you need three things, right? One, you need a great team. So you need to be able to identify wherever you're going to be based, you need to be able to put your great team together, right? Two, you need, you know, reasonable infrastructure, right? So you're not spending all your day in a train or a bus trying to get to work or trying to get back from work, right? And three, you need access to customers, right? Now, what's interesting about, you know, Bangalore is that it was where a lot of the technology 1.0 businesses, the leaders were built. So there was already some amount of core technology knowledge experience there. Two, you know, Bangalore being a large city now, you know, had pockets of infrastructure where you could plug and play, right? And you could get going very quickly. And, and you know, I think three in terms of customer access, because it's a very progressive city, um, there was a lot of early adopters in Bangalore as well. You have that same dynamic in Gurgaon, right? Because you have the 1.0 internet companies, the, the Nokris of the world, the Times internets of the world, they were all built out of, out of Delhi, right? The first generation e-commerce companies, you know, the snap deals were built out of here, right? So you have that same gene pool of talent that was groomed in technology here. You have lots of infrastructure now available. In fact, there's lots of offices that are empty, so it's easy to get. And then from a team standpoint, actually you're able to get an interesting blend because you've got the IITs here, you've got a people who've got a business degrees, whether it's FMS or other schools like that. And then you've got large corporates, you know, that are where people are saying, look, I'm tired of my day job. I want to get into a startup environment. So funnily enough, you know, Gurgaon has become this melting pot of a lot of activity because it's also a relatively low cost place to start a business.